Ahoy! Ahoy! And welcome to this narrow boat adventure. Today I'm here with the mysterious BD man, otherwise known as Sebastian Goodwin Day. That's the one. He plays the theme music, he wrote the theme music and all of the other music on this channel generally. And he also is a man of many talents as he is very good with raspberry pies. No, not that kind of pie. Oh yeah, delicious pies. <laughs> Why don't you tell them more about what a raspberry pie is? Raspberry pie is a small computer. Um, they're quite cheap, um, but you can run them as a desktop and you can also run them as a retro gaming device playing old SNES and PlayStation games. So we can show you ours today. <laughs> I guess a good place to start is asking you to tell me exactly what a Raspberry Pi is. So a Raspberry Pi is a small uh, do-it-yourself computer. Um, they're, they're sort of as powerful as some um, older smartphones, I'd say, um, which is more than enough power for many things. Um, they're only about £35 and they can be turned into retro gaming devices or they can be turned into desktops or some people just turn them into media hubs you, you just get a chipboard and it has um, it's, a, it's got the all the outputs are connected to it so like the USBs and the HDMI's you're not doing any of that and then you just need to get a case for it for protection um, so what does it look like in our setup so in our setup I went for an aluminium um, case which is a slightly more expensive case that everything's quite cheap though because um, it acts as a heat sink as well because up compared to others you could get some which use like had internal fans uh, which seems like a bit of a waste of power and or you can get others that are just plastic and don't really do any other function and so with ours you velcroed it onto the side haven't you yeah I've velcroed, velcroed it to the side and had it at an angle so that the USB ports would be the way they would come out of the um, suitcase and so other than the Raspberry Pi what have we got going on inside this suitcase um, so we've got the TV obviously which is um, how you have to use the Raspberry Pi it has uh, we have a Chromecast in there which we can put into the TV that doesn't need the Raspberry Pi but that's if we just want to watch Netflix on on the big screen um, I've got so I've got N64 controller and a P PlayStation controller in there which are actually original ones from my original console um, when I was a kid um, and I need to get an adapter for those but they're ready to go I don't see why they wouldn't work uh, then I've got keyboards um, which can be used with, well, for all the desktop side of things and a mouse as well and the knockoff SNES controller right? oh yeah and the knockoff SNES controller which is well uh, called a buffalo something or other but it's uh, it's clearly a SNES controller You've gone from this bit of hunk of machine with nothing on it. So tell me about the setup and like how you put all the stuff on it and then we can talk about the stuff that's on it afterwards, I reckon. Okay, um, so yeah, the, the pie starts as a blank canvas. There's nothing on it when you have to, you have to, you need a computer to start with because you have to go on, so you have to find the software and the, um, um, interfaces that you want to work with um, so you have to download those and then get them onto an SD card so as downloading RetroPie um, after lots of reading and finding out all the exact things it's quite complicated but you just have to kind of follow instructions and then um, yeah so I have that that's connected and then it has all these sort of emulators on it so you can then play things like old SNES games or that I used to play or PlayStation One games or N sixty four or and Atari you've done that Mega Drive. Coding, is that right? Uh, sort of, like mostly copying, <laughs> but um, like. But copying code. Right? Yeah, sometimes you have to copy or actually typing a bit of code. Like a, you, a lot of it initially is using the terminal um, to make things happen because there's no, there's nothing to press initially. You just have to sort of start typing things in, um, which is kind of cool. And so then now we've got uh, all the different games consoles that you mentioned inside the Pi mm -hmm. that you can play those games. Yep, you can. And we've also got the desktop. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah, the, so the desktop um, is actually really cool because you can, rather than using my laptop, 
uh, we can run the Pi, uh, we can run uh, Google Docs on there. I, I also downloaded a like a open uh, a freeware um, desktop as well. So there's a there's one on there as well. But you've got you can use Google Docs. You've got the browser. Um, you can watch YouTube on there. It's got video processing. Just use it as a desktop, really. It's sometimes a little slower than other times, but it's just functional. The fact is, you can sit there for hours doing a bit of work, or Jazz can use it for editing, like for writing uni. her essays and doing you know uni stuff as well. It doesn't work for editing. <laughs> no, it's, yeah, it couldn't. It, it's <laughs> it not could. capable. Of, it can't edit a video, for example. No. Like there are certain things that would be way beyond its capability, but in terms of word processing, office stuff, which really doesn't need much. So let's talk about power consumption, suitability for a boat, why we chose to have it, that stuff. Well, power-wise, at its at, at its most is about two and a half amps and, um, to run the Pi, and then the the Cello TV is uh, it's about is two one to two amps, I think. Um, and the Pi runs off of the USB of the TV, um, so it's all pretty low uh, consumption, and so it's, it's good for a boat in that sense. Uh, because we run on 12 volt, we can't charge our laptops with an inverter or anything, yeah. and also this is something that we can use sort of in the winter without feeling too guilty. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's it's good in winter. It's it just takes it takes less power. It's been good in the lockdown because we've haven't been able to charge our laptops with like going to a cafe or doing all that sort of stuff. So it's been essential, really. And then finally, I guess we ought to talk about the design. I'll talk a bit about my vision, and then you'll talk about <laughs> implementing it. <laughs> so initially, um, when the pie was being set up, we just had this massive pile of wires and screens and all sorts of stuff everywhere. Um, which I don't think was ever the plan for it overall, but it started to inspire me. Because um, you'd been talking a little bit about maybe having it wall mounted. Mm. Anyway, so I had a vision to have it in a suitcase with the screen on the top part of the suitcase and everything else inside. Because I was like, well, then we can move it to whichever room we want to use it in. And then when we're not using it, it won't like look ugly. Because when we got rid of our previous television, I was mightily relieved because it just made the space feel a lot nicer. Yeah, it's nice not to have things hanging off the walls too much. Yeah. So then, basically, I explained it to Seb with several drawings and several explanations later. We kind of got an idea of what I was trying to explain. Um, and we started searching for the suitcase and finally got the suitcase. And then Seb implemented my vision wonderfully and, and also added some of his own... Um, ideas so you can talk about where you went from there yeah well yeah the TV um, I'd, I've basically velcroed it onto the back um, I put it onto a little onto a, a board with there's the screw holes that normally go into the mounts I put for that through a piece of board and then I was able to like glue and velcro to that um, so that's that's that old back onto the back wall and the res Raspberry Pi I velcroed onto the side so it's nice and smart and it sort of stays away from things and the USB ports are accessible and the HDMI cable can be left in. Um, and then I've added this partition in the middle um, so I've got basically the office stuff, I've got the keyboard and the mouse um, at the front and then at the back I've just got some controllers for whatever like the N64 and stuff. So it's kind of like a mullet. Business in front, party in the back. That's right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what else is there? There's Have we talked about putting sponge on the top of the partition? Oh no, yeah. There's, there's. So that partition in the middle is a is a, a little block of wood, and then I put there's sponge on top of it. Um, and then I've just put fabric over, so that's so when the when it does close, that the screens doesn't get broken or scratched when it comes down. Um. And as long as it stays level, everything should stay in the right place. <laughs> and then you did the lining as well, which I thought was a nice touch. Yeah, just a bit of old fabric and did some lining in there as well, just to make it a bit nicer than looking like just the inside of a um, suitcase. <laughs> so, that's the pie. Yeah. That's the one. Okay, 
Now I'm going to say thanks for watching and do all the outro stuff and then we'll just wave at the end, okay? Okay. <laughs> Thank you for watching today and uh, if you have any questions about the Raspberry Pi, leave them down below and either myself or Seb will answer them. And if I answer them, it will probably be after having consulted with Seb as he's the one mastermind. Um, if you want to find more about Seb's music, there's a link in the description, but you can just search Sebastian Goodwin Day Music and you'll probably find it. Uh, thank you for watching. If you'd like to join us again on this narrowboat adventure, please click subscribe down below. And yeah, you can find me on Facebook as well. Mm -hmm. And thanks very much. Right, we're going to wave. Goodbye. Goodbye. Two hands, come on. <laughs>